Uganda as a country has suffered from decades of violent dictatorships and a turbulent political environment. With a history of repercussions against those who speak out, there is widespread fear among communities to voice their concerns. This culture of quiet submission is by now so deeply rooted that some people are not even aware that they have a constitutional right to speak. Throughout North and Northeastern Uganda, TROKRA works in partnership with local civil society organizations and the local and national government to help rebuild communities by enabling citizens to demand social economic justice as a right, engaging policy makers and those in power to implement pro poor policies. TROKRA is an Irish international organization. We have been working in Uganda for a number of years and one of our core priorities is the whole area of governance and human rights. And this program has had a key focus on working with local organizations to work with local communities to help people to actively participate in decisions that affect their lives. We know that there are all sorts of programs to tackle poverty, to tackle injustice. But the key driver for us in development is to ensure that people at the very, very basic levels are involved and actively participate in key decisions that affect their health, their education, the future of their children. And we believe that the ability to participate is how you tackle injustice and poverty. To educate the local communities on their duties as citizens and on their human rights, a wide range of advocacy events were organized over the three years. For example, dialogue meetings at the sub-county and district levels between the community members local leaders and the civil society organizations provided a platform for the citizens to engage with their leaders and an opportunity for the leaders to discuss the developments that have been made so far and to shed light on the service delivery issues or challenges that still need to be addressed. What is happening today is that we have organized uh, a citizen's manifesto surgery. A citizen's manifesto surgery is an event that we organize at the community level to give an opportunity to the members of the community, the citizens, in other words, I would call them the voters, to ask their leaders, those whom they elected into office, to account for them. Now this is May, and you know that also the government, the new government came in May 2011, so they are giving their second year report to the members of the community what they have achieved. So here we have the different uh, people who are holding different political offices, the chairman LC3 and his councillors and his cabinet, the district chairman is represented, and even we call the police to come and also give accountability of how they have worked in the last years. The European Union has worked uh, over decades with the government of Uganda, and it has worked through international NGOs in this region of northern Uganda. It is important for us that uh, where that money is well spent is not just a question of auditors coming in and looking at projects, but whether the, the people, the beneficiaries, are seeing the benefits of, of what we are doing. And so these meetings are important feedback to us, but also, I hope, to the local authorities on whether uh, things are happening as fast as they should. The regular interaction between the community members and their leaders has reduced the prior existing fear to question figures of authority. The meetings were also an opportunity to receive feedback from their community and to discuss the people's roles and responsibilities as citizens. As a next step, suggestions for change and recommendations were made together on the way forward. It is important that uh, the people who are uh, facing hardship every day have a voice, that they are allowed to say, this is what we need. Don't think you can sit in Kampala or in Brussels and decide for us what we need. We know, um, and we also know when we get what you promise us. And so I think these meetings are absolutely essential to see that what we are doing together, that it actually works. Hearing from the communities has also resulted in change and all contemplation to advocate change on the part of leaders.
This has improved those in power's accountability, transparency and responsiveness. Because we are not going to have value for money if the responsible officers are not held to account. Accountability seems, simply means uh, resources expended by government doing what they are supposed to do on the ground and doing what they are supposed to do on the ground on, on a sustained basis, in a sustained way. Through the awareness raising activities by community monitors on citizens' rights to better services delivery, communities have begun to protest and reject poor and substandard services or inputs. We agreed with all the partners that while you are doing everything else, at least let's pick two areas which will all be common for all of us. And we zeroed on health and uh, education. Why did they choose health and education? Is that when we did uh, the survey, the um, end term evaluation of the, of the project that had run out, we discovered that these two are the areas that we are still underfunded. Because of the long distance to the hospital, accessing health services was a big challenge. The elderly and physically disabled could not make it. Women used to give birth by the roadside, but through our community parliament initiative, we now have a health center here in our community of Nakaperi men. The health center is equipped with a maternity ward, and it offers antenatal services as well. I am now an old woman, but my daughters have given birth at this health center because the services are nearer to us. You have ambulances, brand new ambulances by government to the health centers, but there are no drivers for those ambulances. The communities have been able to, to raise that with our support as Uganda Debt Network, of course also through Trocare support. And today as we speak, those health centers and the ambulances at those health centers have got drivers and they can work at any point of call to reach out and improve service delivery. In the area of health, especially last year, one thing that we saw that came through very well, and this was a result of a joint initiative spearheaded by one of the partners in the north, um, that is Pade NGO Forum, where there was this whole problem about the nodding disease. <coughs> this disease attacked my daughter in the year 2010. She was having lunch when she started nodding her head up and down repeatedly. That was on the first day, and on the second day, she got the attack shaking violently as she collapsed on the ground. It was similar to an epilepsy attack with saliva oozing from her mouth. This was a strange disease with no name. A very big meeting was held here, all the leaders and we the community in attendance. We raised our concerns regarding this disease and the district leadership promised to intervene. Indeed, after some time, treatment was availed in our health center where my daughter and other children in this area were attended to. How can we secure that students stay in school, for example? How can you make sure that UPE really delivers what it said it would deliver? And the best way for the citizen to participate was still using the school management committee as the basic unit. These meetings have helped me gain exposure since I used to stay home most of the time. I have interacted with my fellow community members, teachers and school authorities. Discussing with our leaders and the district inspector of schools has been beneficial to us because we are reminded about our responsibilities of sending children to school. We resolved to ensure that the school environment has proper facilities such as toilets. Personally, I've contributed 12 pieces of bricks and 3,000 shillings to the school where my grandchildren attend. Gender is a really important component in this program. It has been for Trokra and it has been for all of our partners who implement this program across northern Uganda. It is very important that the program has always tried to keep in mind the differences between the processes that affect men and women. And in the program, what we have found is that many women traditionally have not had access to participate in all sorts of political processes but through the work of partners, 
we are seeing more and more that women are beginning to participate, they are beginning to become actively involved in meetings, and they are beginning to have their voices heard. In the Teso and Karamoja region, traditional music, dance and drama is a crucial means of mass communication to popularize a given social issue affecting the community. To raise community awareness on their rights, roles and responsibilities, a series of these edutainment events were held and discussions between the local leaders and community members held thereafter. It is providing a platform a, a platform for the people to see what is happening so that they can work together and identify the, the solutions to help them work on the issue. The issue here is um, that they are showing something um, on the right to education uh, because um, um, here it is, it is very common that uh, children rarely reach primary seven and um, the girls are more affected because people are poor so uh, most parents use um, their daughters to earn a living, they are married off to get some few cows, get some money, something like that. We have realized that everybody has a role to play. The parent has a role to play, the teachers have, has a role to play, the politicians have the role to play and the, that has been possible through the support from TROCRA. IEC materials such as these were produced and disseminated. Radio talk shows were also designed to discuss issues that affect access to quality education and health care services. In order to receive input and opinions from the public, some of the radio programs were broadcast live and were highly interactive because listeners were given the opportunity to call in during the shows which provided a platform for intensive and high-level dialogue between the public and the local authorities. When we began this program, we found at the community level, through talking to people through our partners, that only 8% of people knew that they had a right to participate in processes that affected their everyday lives. Over the last two years, we have seen dramatic improvements and we have seen that 19% of women and 22% of men now tell us that they know that they do have the right to participate in all sorts of local meetings, in meetings with local politicians that affect their education, health, roads. They also know that they have a right to be on school management committees. They also know that when meetings are held to look at budgets that affect the local villages where they come from, they not only have a right to be there, but they have a right that their voices be heard. Trocare supports uh the civil society budget advocacy group through Forum for Men Democracy. And one of the things we have been doing, first of all, is to build the capacities of our members in the civil society to understand and analyze budgets because it has been a gap that has been existing. So we now have more community, more, more civil society organizations, but even communities at a grassroots level who can understand and interpret the budget information, that communities now can be able to stand and ask what happened to the previous money that was allocated for a health center, which health center has not been uh, finalized or finished. You have uh, communities asking, why are you building a bridge, yet we want agricultural inputs? You have communities asking, why are you paying 80% of another's money on salaries and only 20% on agricultural inputs? So that way it tells you that communities now understand how resources are distributed within that particular, particular sector. We still have challenge with uh, some political leaders, especially the security agencies. Because, as we mentioned, this is a citizen's manifesto. So people are asked to account for what they have promised. So we have also had a lot of intimidation, especially at the district level, the, the district internal security officers with his structures, the resident district commissioners, 
and also occasionally the police who are called to disperse uh, meetings of such, such nature. You can already witness that there is a lot of peace, but then they will come with excuses because they don't want people to ask those questions that are relevant about the promises. And also, uh, on, on two or three occasions, we have had to record statements, and uh, we have been, uh, personally, have been arrested to explain some of the, the work that we are doing. You know, the Citizen Manifesto is a, is a community-driven initiative. As you can see today, normally we are having around 500, 300 people coming together for this kind of meetings. And in the political wing sometimes view it as, as, as a demobilization strategy. So they would try to oppose it. We have met resistance where people fear to talk to their leaders, ask questions. But where we come from the perspective of benefits, yeah, more than the risk, then they will always come out. We give them the constitutional provision, like the power belongs to the people, that your leaders are your messengers. You have to ask questions about what have they done for you, yeah? Because they are representing your interests. And if they are not coming back to give you uh, information, feedback, yeah? You still have another time in future to have another leader who is responsive. Trokra, through her partners and the local government, has continued to pursue the objective of building an empowered and vibrant civil society, especially the poor and vulnerable women and men in the north and northeastern Uganda, in engaging with the local government authorities on key social services policy and program change. I think in this whole process of working with the communities to empower them to begin to demand uh, accountable uh, accountability from their leaders, to demand good services, to demand that they participate in issues that impact on their lives, I think is a, a powerful lesson and which I maybe I think should be shared by others. Not to think that you can speak, let the people become a voice for themselves, but for you as a facilitator, just amplify that voice. The knowledge acquired through this project has empowered the civil society organizations and communities to demand for accountability from both the local leaders and those in power, promoted transparency and accountability among those in power, and increased community participation in local decision-making processes and local planning and monitoring local government programs and public resources. But all of this has happened not just because of Trokra and because of our partners, but also because of the funding we have received from the European Union through DGAP and from Irish Aid, the development arm of the Irish government. So I think this collaboration between the international donors, an organisation like Trokra, which is here on the ground in Uganda, and our local partners who are in the community spread across northern Uganda, working in hundreds of villages, has made a real and a lasting difference. I don't think that those communities that have been empowered and they have really successfully challenged will, will say because we no longer have Pade who is coming to help us so we sit back they will continue because they have the knowledge and its power they have the skill they know how to go about it they know where to approach and how to approach so the, the, the partners will not go away because Troke has gone away but more so the knowledge and the skill that is resident in the communities will continue.